As you know in chemistry, atoms and molecules are very, very small. So when we count them, we have to count them by very, very large numbers. And let me give you a, a comparison. When bakers make cookies, they count them by the dozen. Now let's think about the idea of a dozen. And if I asked you, what, what was more? A dozen pencils or a dozen cars? You'd say, well, they're the same. They're, they're a dozen. There's 12 pencils and, and there's 12 cars. Um, but do they weigh the same? Well, no, because pencils are very light. Cars are very heavy. In chemistry, a dozen is too small of a number. We use a number called the mole. And by that, I don't mean the fuzzy little creature that uh, digs in the dirt. Uh, the mole was a number that was developed by a, a fellow called Avogadro. And it's really a, a, an incredibly massive number. Uh, to give you an idea, here it is here. The, the number of a mold is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles or things. Uh, it, written in standard form, this is what the number is. It really is immense. This number was developed by using the carbon-12 isotope on the periodic table. And there's quite a story behind that, but we don't really have to worry about it too much. Suffice to say that if you have 12 grams of carbon-12, then you've got one mold of carbon atoms, or in other words, you've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Well, how do you use these things? Well, to, to use this, we have to give you a concept called uh, molar mass. Uh, the mass of one mole of a substance is called its molar mass. Now, that means if you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of that substance, how much does it actually weigh in the real world? Now, to do that, you get that off of your periodic table. So if we look up, for example, and ask, what is the molar mass of water, which is H2O? Well, if you look up hydrogen, you can see, of course, that it's got its atomic number. We know he's number one. Right here is his atomic mass, 1.008. And what that means is one mole of hydrogen has a mass of 1.008 grams. Oxygen. Uh, atomic number is 8, and its molar mass, in other words, what does it weigh, 15.999. Some periodic tables will just say 16 even. Uh, that means one mole of oxygen weighs 16 grams. So what's a, what's a mole of water weigh? Well, in water, which is H2O, we have two atoms of hydrogen, so we have 2 times 1.008, and we have one atom of oxygen, which weighs 15.999. Put those together, and we find that the molar mass of water is 18.015 grams per mole. And what that means is this. That means that if you have about 18 grams of water, you've got about one mole of water. You've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of water. Best way to see this thing in action is to practice with a few. So what's the molar mass of each of the following? And the first one is sodium hydroxide. If you look at its formula, you can see that it's got one sodium. It's got one oxygen, and I'm going to multiply it by one here, one hydrogen. Now, if you get out your periodic table and look these up, you'll find that sodium has an atomic mass of 22.99 grams per mole, and oxygen has a mass of 16.00 grams per mole on your periodic table. Hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. So if we add all these fellows up, we get a rather interesting number. We get 40 grams per per mole. So that's a nice round number. Um, so think of this. If I weighed out 40 grams of sodium hydroxide, it's a white uh, powder in the back room, and it dissolves easily in water, forms an aqueous solution. But if I weighed out 40 grams of it on my weigh scale, I would have exactly one mole. And think about that number. It's, a, it's an easy one to work with. If I had, for example, um, if 40 grams is one mole, then 20 grams would be half of a mole. Um, 80 grams would be two moles. That's how that molar mass works. So I can actually weigh these things out and know how many atoms I've actually got. The next one, CH3OH, uh, this is methanol. We've got in here uh, one carbon. And altogether, I've got uh, four hydrogens. So I've got to multiply that by four. And I've just got uh, one oxygen. So if I look up their molar masses on the periodic table, carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 multiplied by 1. Well, that's 12.01.
hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.01, multiply that by 4, I get 4.04. .04. And oxygen has a molar mass of 16.0 when you look it up, multiply that by 1 and you get 16. Okay, add all these guys up and what do you get? You know, if you check it out, you get a molar mass of 32.05 grams per mole. So, so compared to sodium hydroxide, if you want to get a mole of sodium hydroxide, you'd have to weigh out 40 grams. If you want to get a mole of methanol, you only need 32.05 grams of it, because obviously methanol is a little bit lighter than sodium hydroxide is. Now we do have a formula for this that's listed in your uh, data booklet, and that is simply this. That if you want to calculate the mass of a substance in grams, you take N, which is the number of moles, and you multiply it by capital letter M, which is the molar mass. So you've got to be kind of careful with this thing here. Little m is the actual mass in grams, right, measured in grams. N is the number of moles, and capital M is the molar mass from your periodic table. Uh, the problem with this is we've got a lot of m's floating around, so it does get uh, a bit awkward here. Another way you can think of it, though, instead of uh, formulas, is to understand the concept of what's called the factor label method of converting between quantities. So you'll, you're usually going to be asked whether you want to figure out how many moles you have or how many actual grams you've got. Well, what you've got here to understand is you've got a, a, a ratio. If we look, for example, at carbon-12 again, and go back to uh, the beginning here, one mole of carbon is worth 12.01 grams of carbon. So you could express it like this. You could say that a ratio of one mole of carbon divided by 12.0 grams of carbon is one, because they're both basically the same thing. It's like dividing by your own self. You get an answer of one. Now, if that gives you one, then so does this. If you flip it the other way around, you can say 12.01 grams of carbon is worth one mole. So there's a ratio of one there as well. Now again, the best way to see this thing in action is to actually see it being done. So for example, on this one, I'm going to ask what is the mass of, and on the other side, I'm going to ask how many moles are there. So if I ask for mass, five moles of sodium hydroxide. Well, once again, we've done this guy before. We had sodium multiplied by one, oxygen times one, hydrogen times one, and then we get out our periodic table, look them up. Uh, sodium is 22.99 grams per mole. Oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. Hydrogen is 1.01. .01. When we add that up, we get a nice even 40 grams per mole. Now, if you use the equation, um, it would say, listen, the, the mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. So if we want to find the mass of this thing, we would take the number of moles. Now they said, you've got five moles. Multiply that by the molar mass, which is 40.00 grams per mole. Now, if you look at this thing very carefully and look at the mass, you'll see why this works. Because if I have a mole here, which is in the numerator, and a mole here, which is in the denominator, that all I end up having left is just the grams, which is what I looked for. Uh, 5 times 40, this is an easy one. This is 200 grams. So looking at the units and writing them down, rather than just writing down simple numbers, can tell you whether you're going to get what it is you want to get. Let's try another one here. What if we have 5 moles of uh, NH3, or ammonia? Well, what does that mean? We've got 1. Uh, nitrogen, and we've got hydrogen multiplied by 3. Look up nitrogen, 14.01, multiply that by 1, 14.01. Hydrogen, 1.01 is its molar mass, multiply that by 3, you get 3.03. .03. Uh, put these guys together, and what do you get? You get 17.04 grams per mole. Now, you want to find out um, what the mass of this would be, which is measured in grams. So, you know, when kids do this, sometimes they don't know, should I multiply or should I divide? Well, what would happen, for example, if I did this thing uh, all wrong? Uh, what would happen if I took um, the 17.04 grams per mole and I tried to divide that by 5 moles? 
well, this one's not going to work out because I've got a I've got a denominator and I've got another denominator, and that's just simply not going to work out mathematically. But if I did this, if I took my five moles and I multiply that by 17.04 grams per mole, so that mole is underneath, then once again I have a situation where I have a numerator up here and a denominator down there. And of course they will cancel each other out, and all I got left is grams. So 5 times 17.04 works out to be 85.2 grams. So you've got a choice of either using the formula or you can use the, the, the unit ratios, whichever one works for you. Uh, now, the other way around, how many moles are there in 360 grams of glucose, which is C12, C6H12O6? Okay, this is going to be a bit of a pain to work out because I've got carbon multiplied by 6, hydrogen multiplied by 12, oxygen multiplied by 6. What do I get here? Well, carbon is 12.01, multiply that by 6, and you're going to get 72.06. Uh, hydrogen, 1.01, multiply that by 12, you're going to get 12.12. Oxygen, which is 16.00, multiply that by 6, and you're going to get 96.00. Add all these guys up, and you're going to get a molar mass of 180. 0.18 grams per mole. Now, if we just have a little think about that, you might notice that, uh, hey, that's about half of this 360 grams. So if it takes 180 grams to basically make uh, one mole of glucose, and I give you 360, that hopefully you can see logically here that I've got enough for about uh, two moles of, uh, of glucose. Now, how can I prove that? Well, if the formula in your book goes the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass, then we would say, okay, the mass was 360 grams. That's how much you were given. The molar mass is 180.18 grams per mole. And now what's going to happen to us again here is I have grams as a numerator and grams as a denominator, so they cancel out. And so when I do the division on the calculator, this works out to be 1.9988, yada, yada, yada. And really, since I'm only allowed to have uh, two significant digits here, I'm going to pretty much have to round this one off and call it 2.00 um, moles. So we were right. We've got about two moles of glucose here. What about 20 grams of magnesium nitrate? Well, first off, we've got to get the formula. We have a magnesium and we have nitrate. Now, if you look these up on your charts of polyatomic ions, you'll find that nitrate has a, magnesium has a charge of, na of plus two, nitrate has a charge of just a single minus. So in order to make this molecule come together, you're going to have to have two nitrates to compensate for that magnesium. So that means when you add things up, you're going to have magnesium times one, you're going to have nitrogen times two, and you're going to have oxygen times six. That's going to change your numbers quite a bit. So now you see how important the formula is here. Uh, magnesium, if you look it up, has a molar mass of 24.31. Multiply that by 1, we get 24.31 grams per mole. Nitrogen, I looked that one up, it's 14.01. Uh, Multiply that by 2, you're going to get 28.02 grams per mole. And oxygen is 16.00. Multiply that by 6, and you're going to get a total of 96.00 grams per mole. Add that all up on your calculator, and you will get 148.33 grams per mole. Now, we want to know how many moles are in that. So what do we do? Well, once again, if you just think about the ratios here and say, all right, I've got 20 grams of magnesium nitrate. It takes 148.33 grams to make one mole. I'm not even close, folks. Uh, I mean, I've only got 20 grams. So the number of moles I'm going to get is going to be really small. It's going to be some kind of a decimal number. That would tell me then that what I'm going to do here is, is not multiply, I'm going to be dividing. Uh, in fact, I'm going to get a very small number. Um, I'm going to be ending up taking my uh, 20 grams, and I'm going to divide it by the molar mass, which is 148.33 
three grams per mole. And once again, when I set up this correctly, my numerator denominator grams cancels out. And my answer, all that's left is moles. Uh, what's 20 divided by 148? Well, if you get your calculator out, you'll find it's a very small number. It's 0 0.1348, and, and it goes on and on and on. Uh, it looks like I'm only going to be able to use two significant digits, so I'll have to round this off to 0 0.13 moles. And that makes sense, because remember, I was only given 20 moles of magnesium nitrate, and it takes 148.33 grams to, to make one mole. So 20 grams being given to me is, is like not even close. It's going to be a very, very small number. So there's an example of how this stuff is done. What we need to do with you now is have you practice, practice, practice until you get this figured out correctly.